you're sitting there today pastoring a great church, but um, that wasn't the Steve Bone that started uh, many, many years ago. Tell us, tell us about the old Steve that, that's passed away. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he did. You know, the Bible says for sin abound, grace does much more abound. I had to have a lot of grace from God to get me from where I was. Him. But my teenage years and early adult life began as I was a bass guitar player in a rock band on the road. Oh, uh, I found myself 10 years into an addiction, uh, gone off born. I was at home playing and just um, couldn't get free. Just could yeah. not get free. I felt trapped. And, you know, maybe somebody's watching today and that's, you feel trapped. You might, your life might not be as, crazy as mine was you may just be going to work living at home but you're trapped there's some addictions there's some things that you can't get rid of and uh, wow. i want to tell you the story of what happened to me I, I come to the end of it philip and i realized you know if i got to live this way i don't want i don't want to live i, I got to get free yeah. it was as simple i was by myself philip i knelt down by the side of the bed i was <laughs> raised in a I'm fifth generation pentecostal person yeah. i knew how to uh, i knelt down and, and i just said lord jesus if you will take my mess, I'll give it to you. If you'll take my mess, fill it. It was as it, when the Holy Ghost came in, I yeah. felt the weight of the world come off my shoulder. I absolutely felt alcohol addictions, drug addiction. It all just came up out of me. The Holy Ghost of God had came in. I had repented. I was born again. And what the Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he's a Amen. new creature. Yes. All things pass away and all things become new. I find myself, nobody had to tell me. I got up off my knees. I knew I was delivered. I knew I was saved. I knew my name was written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. And I knew that I knew my future was going to be different than what the last 10 years of my life had been. So, uh, and you know what? He's saying God today. He'll do the same thing for you today as he did Never 40 changes. years ago. He'll still save. He'll still deliver. And your best years can still be ahead of you. You don't have to Absolutely. give up the middle of the that you're in right now. You don't have to. My dad, my dad got saved, and his and, and his testimony was my, my mom got saved seven years before him, and he would I mean he just tried to break our will and our spirit actually, and when he finally when he finally came to the Lord Jesus, his his testimony mm. was he, he when he when he opened his eyes after asking Jesus into his heart, he thought the power in in the little house had been turned up double power. And he walked outside, he says, and the blues were bluer and the greens were greener. He says, yes. the birds were singing that Simon Cameron yes. had been reconciled to God. When you're born again, let me tell you something. If you're watching us today, a lot of people try to drag the corpse of who you were into who you are. The Bible says uh -huh. all things pass away and everything becomes new. You don't have to carry the corpse of your old life. That man was dead in sin and trespasses. And Jesus by his blood has come and made you alive. And I know this. Watch me just now. There are people that you're saved. And God has forgiven you. And your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. And everything that God, all the promises of God are yours. And you are still dragging around the corpse. Yes. Of yes. who you once were. And I just speak to you in the name of Jesus. That deliverance is going to come into your life. That you're going to be set free. God set you free. He can't set you free from sin twice. You've been set free. God doesn't have grandkids. He only has kids. Amen. But you are a new creator, a creation in Christ Jesus. The devil comes and tries to throw things up from your past. And they don't exist anymore. And uh, let me tell you something, Steve. When that, when that first wave of forgiveness hit you... I bet you, uh, you, you were a different man. Oh my God. You, you, you just, you just feel, I did. I felt like the whole, I felt like I'd lost a hundred pounds, man. Oh, but then, man. what you said, what you said, Philip, and, and those that are watching, maybe you're thinking, well, well, I tried that. It didn't work for me. Well, you know, uh, God does his part, but you got to do your part too. Absolutely. And uh, even though I knew I was delivered from those addictions a week later, two weeks later, they come back trying to talk to you. Sure. You know, they'll come back around and remind you what it's like and what it is. And you just got to get in the Word, get in a Bible and say, I have Absolutely. made a decision. I'm going to stick to this. I'm going to give it time to work out. And and you know what? One day you'll look up and you'll go, well, I am set free. I really am set free. That doesn't bother me anymore. But you can't just give up after you come yeah. to Christ and you have a bad day. Yeah. You can't just give up. You got to keep going. You got to keep walking. You got to keep pushing, you know. I've got a, I've got a cousin called Derek. Actually, he's married to my cousin, but he's, he's just like a, he's just, it's like flesh and blood. And Derek came to our church service in Scotland. 
And my dad was preaching and gave out the appeal. And he said, if you're not saved here tonight, put your hand up. And Derek thought he was asking all those who weren't saved. So he put his hand up. And my dad says, I see your hand, son. Come forward to get saved. And, and he says, oh, no, I don't want to get saved. I just want to tell you that I'm not saved. <laughs> That's how much he knew about the church. And uh, that yeah. night he came down to our house afterwards and I talked to him. And, and, and my mother-in-law um, had the joy that in the middle of the night he, he went to her house and, and knocked on the door and, and she prayed with him and he got saved. Two hours later, he was in, a, in the airport, in Aberdeen Airport, going to Ireland. He was a soldier on his way to the, the troubles that were then going on in Ireland. Listen to this. This is what born again means. So he's sitting there. And um, early in the morning, four or five o'clock in the morning, the government plane about to take them, I mean, to fight the IRA and the bombings and the killings was terrible. And they had trays of beer, big trays of beer. And they were, they were going around all these soldiers about to go on the plane. And, and they came to him and he reached out for the beer and something inside him said, nah, you don't need that, Derek. Save two hours. But the old man had died. The old Derek would have been right in there. But as soon as the gospel does its work in you, all things yes. pass away and everything becomes new. And uh, mm-hmm. man, I love I love to hear the words of deliverance. Have, so what did your buddy say? You, oh, well, I have to tell you this story. I was going to tell you a story. What you, you, you prompted me. So I, I, I accepted Christ on a Sunday evening. We were home for the weekend. The band, I was yeah. home for the weekend. We were to leave at two o'clock in the morning to drive from here in South Carolina down to Birmingham. Yeah. And uh, I got in the van and I told them, guys, listen, in the van, I said, listen, I'm going with you for several weeks. When we get back, you better have somebody to replace me because I'm born again. I got, they laughed. They were <laughs> going through something. I love it. What said, never had happened. It had never happened in all the years. But we went to this big nightclub to set up that day and was getting a sound check and a rehearsal. And the man that owned the club, he fell in love with us, and he comes up and says, look, guys, free beer on the house all week. Y'all have all you want. Let's go get one now. Well, all the guys I was with, phew, they made a beeline back to the bar, right? Do you know the Holy Ghost kept me? When he said free beer, something in me found it. Something in me oh, swole up like sickening feeling almost, you know. And I got through that whole week with that man offering free beer every night. They're taking advantage of it. Never once did I fall slip into that. I was laying in the hotel room thinking about it toward the end of the week, and I heard the Spirit of God tell me, I got you. I can keep you. I can hold you. Just go with me. So I found out quick, you know, he has delivered us from the powers of darkness. He has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. And who is he that overcomes? He that believes. And I, I realized early just by the mere fact that I'm born again. I've got the victory over the devil. His head's crushed under my heel, and I'm going to resist him every time he comes at me. Fine. That's what you have to do. Well, I, I, I'm, my background is every man in our family for over 200 years were alcoholics. Wow. We were the drunkards of the town. We, we No one wanted it to be any part. In fact, not so much now because they're all dead, but when I was a boy growing up, um, the, the whole town couldn't forgive God for forgiving us. <laughs> they, they were mad at God. All the religious folk were mad at God because he, he, he saved these crazy lost Camerons. And Jesus came in and broke 200 years of alcoholism in our family. It's and I, just, just like that. And God set us free. And many of us became preachers.